Enjoy all your favorite sports like never before at BetMGM. Sign up using code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. When you register with BetMGM, you'll get instant access to a variety of parlay selection features, live betting options, and the best daily promotions in the business. And with BetMGM at your fingertips, every play and every game matters more than ever. Remember to use code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. Place your money line, prop, or parlay bets with the king of sportsbooks today. BetMGM and GameSense remind you to play responsibly. BetMGM.com for terms. 21 plus only. Iowa only. New customer offer. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Oh, no music, no intro. The Saints, the New Orleans Saints, as we tape this podcast, are eight and two. <laughs> eight and two. And they are the current number one seed in the NFC. Yeah. Who that bitch? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Then we do it. Then oh man. Come on, I now. just love I just love beating the Falcons, bro. Like come just, on, man. Just beating them motherfuckers. Mm. Uh, like I, I don't I don't give a shit, man. It just makes my day even better, bro. It was it was a glorious experience. And I know we'll we'll get we'll get to taste them, right? We'll get to them, we'll get to the office, we'll get to all that. But yeah. we have to start. Got to. Gotta start with them dogs up front. Mm. The New Orleans Saints defense held the Falcons, who I know Julio was in and out of the game, but still over the last couple of games have had a very decent offense. Held them to the nine points, Ryan. Bruh. I mean, that's a good. I don't care what they. I mean, that's a good offense. I mean, it's a Matt Ryan good offense that could put up forty points on you if you don't defend them. You know what I'm saying? Even without Julio, I mean, Cal, Calvin really does his thing. They've done things in the run game. Like, make no mistake, man. Like, that was a great performance by the defense, bro. And and it's just you know we've just seen it the past couple of weeks just getting better and better, like all phases. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about secondary playing together with the front, recognizing when the blitz is coming so the secondary knows, you know, stay high. Oh, my God. It's Come like, on, man. It's, it, they playing team defense now. And then Drew Brees out, so you know. Oh, you know it's how that go. Oh, you know how that go. <laughs> oh, what? Drew out? Oh, shit. We got to gotta turn up. They did all this, all this without Marshawn. No Lattimore, bro. Come like, on, no man. Lattimore. So let's uh, – so – We'll talk about Taysom. We'll talk about the offense. But what we're seeing from this defense, Cam, DeMario, Chigga Trey, Chigga Trey almost got double – is going to end up in the season with double-digit sacks. Yeah, I'm Chigga Trey going to get paid, bro. <laughs> Most likely not by the Saints, but he going to get paid, dog. Like, he going to get paid next year. He is playing – he is playing himself – like who would have thought? Like just, just think about that, bro. A couple of months ago, we was like, "Oh man, clowny." Who went? Who, who went on IR today? You serious? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it may be like the three game IR, but he but still IR today. Does he still have zero sex? Pro- I, I mean, think he still got zero sex. <laughs> the Saints are the most beneficial teams, one of the most beneficial teams of making moves that don't end up working for them that I've, yeah. I think I've ever seen with yeah. Clowney, 
uh, Tremaine Johnson, uh, oh, Josh Josh Norman. Josh, Josh Norman. Uh, so remember Paul uh, uh, Paul Kruger a few years ago? They were gonna pay him like nine million a year. Oh, the the, the the Browns. That's right. Yeah, the Browns were like, oh no, we'll pay you more. It's like, woo. <laughs> Thanks, Browns. <laughs> And this time it's like, thanks, Goodell. Good looking out, brother. <laughs> so let, I don't even know where you want to start, but I, I you said it perfectly. You 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 set it up. The the secondary and what in what they're doing is a, the the defense line and the secondary are matching their their coverages and they're all in sync. So during the game today, at times there were a lot of the times, honestly, some of it was blitzing, but a lot of the times the sacks that Matt Ryan took were coverage sacks. They weren't they weren't from the defensive line just winning outright. No, I'm not trying to downplay their performance and how great no, they no. played. But I mean, a lot of they yeah. he had nowhere to go with the ball. That's and we I know we I know we rag on him a lot, but oh, yeah. P Rob he P Rob P. Rob playing, bro. Like when he's besides that Chargers game when he got eight alive on that double move, P. Rob is playing. Janoris Jenkins, he had man when he had that that long catch in the first that first Falcon mm-hmm. drive. I was like, oh, oh lord, oh lord, here we go. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, it's just something about these opening scripts. It's up, something about him, bro. Something it's about him. For, it's been for a few years, like. Offensive offensive coaches, they're able to just scheme real good ones are able to scheme up just a nice open script against this defense for whatever reason. But I just, you know, it, as a Saints fan, you're just freaking out because you start the game like that. But you got to remind yourself, okay, this is just this is just that first 15 opening script. Like they're gonna settle in, you know what I'm saying? And obviously they did. Yeah, Janet Jenkins, man, he's been balling, man. Like, balling, balling. And really, bro. really at the beginning of the year, he was playing well. It just was those penalties. So, but now he's, you know, he's done a pretty good job of getting rid of those penalties and he just balling, man. Balling. Um, that first drive, I got, I got nervous though. Started saying a little, little, you know, Negro spiritual. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> just, oh, here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. Um, but even, even we saw, like I saw a player in, let's, I know he gets a lot of credit. I know he gets a lot of hype. Demario Davis is on another level, man. He, mm-hmm. he, he. He is so good. He is so good. The, seeing him run down the seam with Russell Gage, a slot receiver, and yeah. he's in perfect position. It come on, man. Come on, dog. And we also got to talk about uh Quine Alexander, Ooh. man. Like he, that that so far, you know, if he stays healthy, I know he was kind of uh getting checked on during the game a little bit, but like on the field, man, he has really elevated the linebacker, like just the he, linebacker core position, you know, one hundred percent. And no, no shot against Anzalone, but like you just you see a difference. Like it is a noticeable. He almost had two plays where he picked he picks off a pass. He didn't make any. He didn't pick him off, but he was close. And I yeah. think what what stands out the most with him is his recognition. Like yeah, yeah. when there's things happen in the passing game, like he'll notice it and he's he's gone. Boom, he's getting there, and that frees up that frees up uh, Demario Davis. That's why you're starting to see him more involved in these pressure packages. But he's a legitimate pass rusher, bro. Like Demario Davis is bringing the heat. You know what I'm saying? Even if he doesn't get there, like the the offensive line has to account for him. You know the the, the you know the quarterback has to mic check and. Know where Demario is because he can come. You know, 56, 56. They got to be yeah. ready. Got to be ready. Um, another fantastic game by David Onyemata. Like I, I, I know I've been on his bandwagon, but he just his level of play these yeah. last couple of games has just been top notch, top notch, like, Ryan. Like, like you know, Sean Rankins was my dude, but like, ain't nobody really missing him. Like. Mm-mm-mm. And they, I mean, you got all these other like I was like, who glass style in there? I was like, yeah, I didn't. I was like, who? Was in there? I'm like, who the hell? Who, like, who is this white dude on the diff? I, I, I was lost. Big Creep Brandison making plays up in there. I was like, man, like Not this the a creep. rotation. I mean, they got a rotation, eight deep, son. 
and they all making plays. Like Ryan Nielsen, the defensive line coach, like watch Chef's Kiss. Like, don't know what he's doing. I have no idea what ah! D line coaches do, but you could see it, man. Like them dudes, all of them are playing exceptionally well. Bill Johnson could never. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Never. Um, and I and whatever you want to say, it's just the rotation. I know the Falcons line isn't the best, but I, I don't want. So, I don't want. I don't want. I'm not. I'm not. Gonna I'm not taking away any shine from how them boys played today, Ryan. I'm not going to do it. I won't. Nah, man. That's a professional NFL. You know. Offensive line. I don't want to hear none of that. No, that's a, no. That's a fine offensive line with a ton of first round picks, and they got eight sacks, bro. Eight sacks. Eight. Like that's that's ridiculous. Uh, On a quarterback that gets the ball out quick, so that I tells know. you the coverage is working with the with the line. Because Matt Ryan, he wants to get the ball out just right, like Drew Brees. So they're the secondary is immediate, and the linebackers are taking away that first and taking away immediately. Here, here's here's the quarter of the game. If you pay attention to football, this was the colder game that Daryl John D- Goose Moose, sorry, Moose, former cowboy, who I love as as a play by play guy. He's great. Oh, he's I great. Love, he's terrific. I love listening to Moose. Um, what he, what he said that Malcolm Jenkins told them during the, the meetup to the game was the 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 game that really kind of showed them that sh- the things were turning for them defensively was the San Francisco game. Malcolm Jenkins oh. told Moose that the discipline that the Saints played defensively when they went against Kyle Shanahan in the 49ers yeah. offense and how they responded and they didn't get it and we talked we we've been on this talking about this in the podcast. I discipline in the, in the the Packers game, the Raiders game, the I discipline of the defense was terrible, but Malcolm Jenkins said that the turning point when he said, "Oh, we we got something was the 49ers game when everything kind of came in sync and then they, they just played their game. They didn't fall Mm -hmm. for the, the cheese and and the glitz and the ghost motion and all that to get, they played their game in their position. And that's what Malcolm Jenkins said. He said, we got something and and we're seeing it. We are seeing it. It's it's just so, it feels so good, bro, because I mean, face it, we talked all off season greatest, you know, Best roster on paper, paper. And specifically the defense. You know, the defense and the secondary and the D line. So just to see them, you know, start the season with their struggles and just make that turnaround and improve week to week to week, it just feels good because it just, it, it you know, it makes you trust yourself again. Like, because they, you know, for a while I was like, do I, can I even trust what I see? Can I trust my evaluations? Like, these are supposed to be good players. Like, why aren't they playing well? You know what I'm saying? But now you're just like, okay, I wasn't tripping. You know what I'm saying? These were other factors. This was a team, a team trying to gel, a defense trying to gel and become a defense. You know what I'm saying? Like the capital D, like playing together as a team. That's what we saw. And now you're starting to see the fruition of it. So, man, I love it, man. I love it. Even Marcus Williams, he getting picks. Jenkins yeah. getting picks. It's just like beautiful. It is. It is. And to see see that, the energy on the – on the sideline and getting and bro, like running the ball is like try running the ball against this defense. Like try. Like I know it. I hate the I you know you know I hate the whole you, you yards hate thing. it. But I hate when it's like phony, but I hate when it's like okay, they ran the ball like 99 yards, but they didn't get a hundred, but obviously you couldn't stop the running. <laughs> like I don't care about that. But when you like putting on tape that it's hard to run the ball against this defense. Like I love it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I live for. Like, don't – like, you. they actually – like, these teams are struggling to run the ball against it. And it just – it starts up front. Like, with the D-line, the linebackers. Stout, you know, bro. The secondary CD dudes getting up there stopping the run. So, it's like, man, it don't even matter who play quarterback. Not nah, shit. <laughs> I mean, it's I, – I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to – I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer tonight. I'm just – when when nine come back, and they and they continue to play this well, because okay, this this is my question for you now. This is my question for you now. I know we talked about how you felt earlier in the season about the the ceiling of these New Orleans Saints. 
now, eight and two, number one seed. As of right now, as of right now, the next stretch of games they have is the toughest in their schedule. They got the Broncos, Atlanta again, and then I believe after that is is it the Chiefs? I'm not looking at a schedule right now. Yeah, I think the Chiefs. Chiefs, and then I think it's Chiefs, then the Eagles, many, whatever. But what have you? And then Carolina, I believe, finished the season. <coughs> yeah. Where, how good and how far can this team go? Without Drew Brees? Ooh, qualifiers. Um, no, I'm I'm saying I'm saying I as Adam, God's first man, gives him my ribs. He comes back with Drew. How far can this team go? Oh, I mean, come on, man. This is like the team, this team is capable of going to the Super Bowl. Like, that's not a question to me. It's not a question. Like you know, I mean, can this team beat if they, if the Packers, if we got to face the Packers again, can they beat the Packers? Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. And, and it sounds weird to say, but like, like the Packers, like, it all depends on what Saints team shows up. And that sounds exactly, weird but that's, that's yeah. been the yes. story for yes. a couple of years now. It's not like, yes, it's not all they talented enough. Of course they tell them. It, it depends what team shows up. Like if, if the team that has been playing the past couple of weeks, that beat the Tampa Bay Bucks, that beat the San Francisco 49ers, that beat Atlanta. If that team shows up, that defense and the lack of uh, mistakes and, you know, just the good coaching and all that stuff shows up, they can beat anybody. They can march right to the Super Bowl. So, I mean, I, I mean, I believe they can, but, but this team, but this team here was never about the regular season. Like, nope. It nope. just never was, man. We Mm-mm. Everybody waiting to see, you know, but – it's hard, you know, as a Saints fan, I, I try to enjoy the regular season. Oh man. Listen, you know? listen. Eight eight and two. Eight and that's, two. That's beautiful, bro. COVID, COVID season. Like, bro, come on. COVID like, season, injuries, quarterback out. I Mike, mean, you name Mike it. Thomas. Mike Thomas, the, Miss- the you know, <laughs> offensive player of the year. You know what I'm saying? He missed like six weeks, seven weeks. And and it's not like he was like balling out when he, as soon as he came back either. So and like, today today was his best game since he t- since he's since he's come back. No, today was his best game of the season. And that's the entire what, season. That's, and that's another thing, man. The teams and the team is improving. So you have Adam Troutman. He's starting to come on. Uh, hit him with Thomas. that that route. Oh, that, that little. He's doing. He, you know, he's doing his little once a game. Now he's like one catch going to kill him. Oh, yeah. Then you got uh, Mike Thomas. He's making a comeback. Callaway, we haven't really involved him yet much the past couple of weeks, but he's there. You know what I'm saying? So, they, I mean, Alexander Zaloni is a fine linebacker. Now he comes in on certain snaps, you know what I'm saying, when they play base. He's coming in or when they, or they're bringing, uh, bringing Bond. I saw Bond. I saw him. I seen him. I, I, I did, too. I, I, I tweeted that. I'm so glad that man got a goddamn haircut because <laughs> – he, he just let that shit go because them, when them early rookie picks came out, I was like, Ugh, uh, <laughs> you just let it go. I'm happy for him. Let it go, bro. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about the offense. Uh, yeah, it man, we was texting each other. I had Max texting me that first half. I was like, it was just like just this general just yuck. Gross. He <laughs> just. Yuck. I tweeted. I tweeted this, Ryan. And I know it's I know you're not gonna be surprised, but I said, man, this is like you trying to, you've been chasing a 10 for years and you finally get her, and like the 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 box is lackluster. He's like, the I'm box, waiting. The box trash, the head trash. It's just like <laughs> I, I waited three years for, for this. <laughs> oh, you know, oh. turn off, turn off the lights. Got to get under the cover and all that. It's like, oh man. Uh, then that second half came, and I so that first half it felt I, Taysom didn't look, he didn't look comfortable, and that was to be expected. But man, I felt like Sean was not doing him any favors no, with the play no. calling. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looked like they may took the approach. I don't know if it was 
Hill that took the approach or Sean that said like be a pocket passer. Like be you know, just be a pocket passer this game. And which is fine because I'm sure, you know, that's what he's aiming to be. And he was a if you look at the stats, he was a solid pocket passer this game. But it was like we I guess a lot of us kind of expected just a little more just kind of like, we expected we expected a Ravens Kaepernick right, just, 49ers offense like run right. ball control and that's and it and it wasn't that it just was not that at all. Mm-mm. So <clears throat> yeah, then you know, uh, come like their third series or whatever, you started to see him kind of. Okay, he's starting to get comfortable. He's making a nice pass to Mike Thomas. You know, it's good to see just Mike Thomas get involved, and it's like, okay. Then, you know, he, he made that uh he made that that whole weird play that he threw like an arm punt. It was like an ugly I mean it went like six almost sixty yards. It was like an arm punt. And Emmanuel Sanders caught it, but he had to like work back to the ball. It looked exactly like a punt. It, it was the, then, it was it was a cat video, bro, that <laughs> and then he caught it and then he gets tackled and he fumbles it. It's like, oh, oh shit. Lord. But then, then he gets reviewed and uh CTE Odell actually touched him like as his knee hit the ground. So okay, you know, it was a catch. But it was like, man, what what kind of pass was that? That was <laughs> just so weird. Even 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 the one that he threw to Sanders that the 57 yard one in the second half that was called back. Uh, for the whole, I was like, what is this loft he's putting on these goddamn bats? <laughs> I mean, he put some air on them suckers. I don't know, it's weird. It's, it's, I guess maybe we just hadn't seen a deep ball in so long. We just like, what is this? I no, I, I, this I, <laughs> I feel like the pat, like the like, I we've seen him throw deep passes, the, yeah, the one to Sam, like, and it, they they were not like this. That's what I was no, very no, confusing, no. but. That second half, he comes in, uh, he gets in a rhythm. It was a it was yeah. a play, I believe it was his third down where he was kind of scrambling and you know he just goes to his left and he throws like this this missile yeah. uh to Mike Thomas, and you could just it you tell like it's kind of settled him in a bit. Uh-huh. The offense as a whole got into this groove and this rhythm, like the rhythm in the second half was a stark difference. Yeah, yeah, and that's what they needed. And even he he talked about it, how he was kind of nervous this week. Um, and then you got to understand, you know, uh, the skill position players are going from, you know, Drew Brees to Taysom. And you know, Mike Thomas talked about how Taysom is a fastball thrower. That's all he throws. Bruh, like, when he dropped that, when he dropped that pass when he was wide open, he looked yeah. at his hands like, oh, this nigga can well, throw. <laughs> Just, man, just like it's not the touch, it's not the anticipation touch throws like Drew Brees, where he just, you know, gently settles it right in your hand. Nah, it's none of that. That nah. bitch coming. That Taysom. bitch coming like. <laughs> Taysom, throw and throw it out here, bro. Throw and throw it. So, you know, I think you're going to see that improve, you know, if, if Taysom continues to start uh, the next couple of weeks as they just, just adjust to him. But yeah, it's just like, it's a different quarterback, man. It's a different quarterback, but it was. I was surprised to see him play pretty well in the pocket, especially in the second half. How he just he just settled in, and you know, I'm not saying he was doing exactly what Drew Brees does, but he was just you know making throws from the pocket, like okay, Evan Kamara right there, boom, go there. But no, Evan Kamara didn't catch. Uh, maybe have any catches today, but going to Mike Thomas, going to Troutman, you know, going to Sanders, it, it just worked. And you know, yeah. when it wasn't there, he would scramble and make a play when he could. And, you know, I mean, that, that's the offense right now. It is. I think, you know, I think if Sean, he he at times looked kind of in, indecisive or when he yeah. wanted to scramble and when he wanted to throw, and that, that led mm-hmm. to some some pretty bad sacks and, and a big, big loss of yardages. Yeah. I think going forward, um, if, you know, he got to be more decisive. Like, if he's either, I'm, I'm throwing it or I'm running he's, he's, He's trying to figure out his game. Like, he yes. doesn't know what his game is as a starting NFL quarterback. He doesn't know. I mean, he talked about it uh, today. He was like, he he knows he can scramble and make plays. He knows that. Like, you are, we already know that. But he was like, his mindset going into this game was like, eyes downfield, you know, 
throw the football. That was his mindset. You know, just to keep his eyes downfield instead of looking for running lanes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, maybe he'll adjust to that or maybe he'll stick with that. But, you know, I, I, and I understand that because yeah, he's he's already been this kind of player for years now, but he's trying to become a quarterback, you know. So, he, you know, you kind of got to – you got to learn on the job. Like, you just have to learn on the job, learn through experience. He has to sit in the pocket and try to make those reads, even though we kind of want him to just do his little, you know, just like, man, like just run, like do, 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 just run that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think it's going, I think we'll see, you know, his game balance out, you know, the next couple of weeks if he, if he continues to start, which I think he will. Oh yeah. I think, I think absolutely he, he will. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. And I tweeted this during the game and it fucking blew up. Um, when I tweeted it, but there's always things as as a person of who's played sports and also have a psych. I don't I don't want to lean heavily into it, but I have a psych major. There are some things that I, that you can see during a sporting event. If you just pay attention, it tells you so much you need to know about the team and whatever it was. Yeah. So, you know, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. You know, when Mike Thomas was back, I, I you know, CD Deuce had made a great play and seeing Mike Thomas on the sideline being amped, I was like, bet, all I need to yeah. see, we good. So same thing happened in this game. Taysom goes off to the sideline, what have you. And who's like on the sideline hyped and, and amped for him and laughing and smiling? Number two, Jameis, oh. the yeah. guy who you would think – like you, I mean, if we being real, like he he should feel real sideways about the situation. Right. Like right. you know, he came in former first overall pick, first overall in the NFL yeah. draft. Um, and you know, last year when Drew goes down, who takes up? It's Teddy, yeah. and for him not to get the nod, you would think he would be sulking or whatever but that that just wasn't the case and i think that just goes to the team dynamic the the chemistry the locker room whatever you want to say about this team i don't know how far this team is going to go but you yeah. cannot shortchange sean payton and the team that he's built and cultivated over the years yeah no man like culture matters i know my dude patrick claiborne you know always making for the culture 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 does matter, man. Like, it absolutely matters. And they have a good competitive locker room. You know, they want to, all, everybody in that locker room wants to win. Everybody wants to get at it, including Jameis Winston. You, I mean, of course he wants to be the starter. And, of course, he was probably disappointed that he didn't start. But at the end of the day, he's on the Saints. And he's a, he, his number can get called at any moment. Like, you know what I'm saying? Taysom Hill can get hurt and he's on the field. You know what I'm saying? So, God forbid. But that could happen at any moment. So, he, you know, he's rooting. He knows. He sees Taysom working his butt off, trying to get on the fit, you know, trying to make plays. So he's happy to see it just like anybody else. It was good to see just Jace, uh, Jameis and Drew just kind of standing there and just analyzing everything. And uh, it, you could just tell it's, it's a close-knit team, man, that, that uh, you know, that's really just coming together. And, they, you know, through all the trials and tribulations of the season, you can tell it just kind of brought them closer where they just kind of, you know, fighting the world. And you, you know, you know Sean Payton was – was putting on a uh, was showing screenshots or clips oh, of the talking heads this week, bro. You Ooh, already know, already know, bro, already know. And what what stood out to me in the second half when this when the Saints got the first first possession in the second half and they were driving and it was a good offensive drive and led to a touchdown is and and he's not usually like this, but as the offense was moving, Teron Armstead was getting amped. Like mm. he was like, yo, this our shit. Let's go. And that's not 72's game. Like he's a great player, but he's not, yeah. he typically is not that vocal, what have you. But you go back and you watch that that first drive in that second half when they're making yeah. plays, he's like, Yeah, like this is our shit. And, let's let, let's go. And they started running the ball real well. And uh I wasn't watching it at that point, I was listening to it on the radio. And Zach Streep talked about after like a good running play, uh, Teron Armstead looked at Sean Payton like and did that feed me, you know, that let, feed me motion. Like, let's keep go. Feeding keep us. going. Let's run. 
let's run this thing. But then he like did a pass play after that. So that's all Peyton. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's that's the Mark Ingram like stop running this shit. Stop running this shit. <laughs> For real, bro. So it's like, bro, like that could be the identity going forward, man. Like if Sean really want to embrace that run because like bro. Like Murray ain't no slouch of a running back. Mm-hmm. He had like a beautiful play today, and he like caught and ran. Like they bro. got the dogs to really like run teams over, bro. He he put that little okie doke on Deion Jones, bro. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. That one, that one, two, three. Um, uh, I was like, yo, oh, man. <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> man. So yeah, I mean, Murray had a great game. I'm glad you brought. He he. He's just a down hook, just downhill thumper that his speed, his straight line speed is, yeah. whew, man. Now, on the other end, man, got to talk about, uh, like, what's up with Jared Cook, bro? Like, he ain't really been having, he's not having a really good year. The past couple of games, man, it's like, every time he's like, are you doing anything well? <laughs> What was the game we was we was cooking in? Oh, it was it was the it was the, the Bucks game, the, 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 Bucks the game. football. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He come with, like the like every single player on that in there during that game had a great game except him. <laughs> it's it's becoming a trend, and yeah. I, and I and I get it. But at one point, at at what point, if you're Sean, do you just go like I know he may not be able to do all the things that Jared Cook can do, like but let's just feature eighty two. And well, well, I mean, eighty-two had more snaps than uh, Jared Cook today, and he had we more snaps. And it's funny because we brought we brought it up on on the emergency pod we did with Eric. Like I, I said, I said the person that's going to step up and fill Taysom's role with Taysom starting the quarterback, it has to be eighty-two, and he yeah. and he did, bro. Like he he has some crack back blocks. Like he's mm. I I a hundred percent, and I know I was annoyed and being a, a very typical fan, you know, seeing the success that Harrison Bryant of the Browns was having. Um, and, you know, Adam Troutman had a slow start to his year, but it all goes, but it, if you look at this team, we, we still haven't seen it from Zach Bond, but I'm giving them a bit further about in terms of, if you look at the team and you go back to the senior bowl, the thing that they highlighted with Adam Troutman's game was his inline blocking. Yeah. And I think, I don't think, like, you see it, like, you see it. You see it on, on game day of why they really l- fell in love with him as a prospect, not just for him as a ca- pass-catching tight end, but yeah. for him to be a, uh, a a complete tight end and use him so much in, in, in the blocking, especially with Josh Hill was out. Like, he, he played a good game, just – yeah. Okay. And, and we know Sean Payton values that so much. Loves it, bro. That, he loves that's why it. Josh, that's why Josh Hill got a lifetime contract. Lifetime. You know, that, that's why he traded uh, Akeem Hicks and whatever for Michael. Who? 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 Eh, we can get past the yards some kind of way, other way. You know what I'm saying? That's just how Charlotte looks at it. Even though I was, I was depressed. Hurt, bro. <laughs> Dark <laughs> days, bro. <laughs> Dark days. Um, one one more thing. Uh, getting back to, getting back to my whole. I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm trying not to be like a body language guy, but just some shit. Just, just that you just see. So, Taysom's cooking. Having a good game, goes to the sideline. Jameis is dapping him up, happy for him. Do you remember Mike Thomas' rookie season? Mm-hmm. And you remember how he was? He busted on the scene. He was a force. And I don't know who pointed it out, or maybe I noticed it. But if you go back and you watch his rookie highlights and his touchdowns, you know who you never saw congratulate him when he was Brandon when Cooks. he was Brandon Cooks, bro. I look for it. I can't find any. <laughs> he was nowhere to be like, you know how the team get amped when, you know, Mike Thomas was scoring everyone, you know, in yeah. the end zone, getting them. Number 10 was never there, Ryan. Like stuff yeah. like that matters. Like it's important. Yeah. It is, man. 
like when Taysom had that t- when Taysom had his that rushing touchdown, not not the two yard one, but the one where you know he 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 just fucking just takes it and takes off and scores that touchdown. Everyone on the offense went to meet Taysom because you could feel how they knew this game was important for him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And exactly, they man. they were happy with his success. Mike Thomas giving him a chest bump. 82 Adam Troutman give him like the the helmet like hell yeah like we we got you like all this shit is all this shit matters like it all it all matters and and people don't I know sports people don't like to think that it matters but it does yeah it absolutely does and uh you know uh, I mean Drew Brees tweeted I think last night uh, the great little cut up video of Taysom Hill and you know he said that you know he believes in Taysom Hill not only as a player but and as a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the energy they putting out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know you could think it's all cheesy and shit like that, but man, that's that's energy. That's good energy they putting out there, bro. Like, and, and Drew don't and Drew and Drew don't say shit. Like, put his name on on shit like that oh, very no. often. Oh, you bro. know Drew. Oh, you know Drew. Like, like what he done that with James? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's something. It's a good window, bro. It it feels good. Um, your boy. So uh, another another bright thing that I I think I, we could talk about. And I, again, we're not tape dogs. We I I'm not gonna go back at any point and watch a single snap of this game. Some I might see some stuff on Twitter. I might watch a little body breakdown. I, I'm not. I don't. I don't have time to break down NFL film, but. I do feel like 51 where Reese had a better game because Oh, I, I want to ask you that. I want to ask you that. How did he play? Because I know Pete went out. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Pete goes out. And you know who had a really good game when Pete goes out? Nick who Easton. That? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, I think I think Pete allowed like a, a sack. <laughs> Like, you going you going to miss three fourths of the game and you going to allow a sack motherfucker. <laughs> you don't get your fat ass out of here, nigga. Go eat some raisin canes and get two, <laughs> two Texas toast, bro. Two Texas. <laughs> just, just, just stop, bro. Just out here stealing checks. Yeah, I man, we we was we was giving Pete some shine a couple of week, two weeks straight, but mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> he going to get that slander, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> So soon, soon as he started fucking up, we coming out, we, we coming for his ass. But yeah, like you said, man, it was a good win. Uh, the Saints are four and zero in their division. Uh, they they have the Falcons again. They have the Panthers again. Um, and we gonna see, man. Like I, as a fan, I'm excited to see this defense continue to ascend. Like, as a fan, I'm hoping that they do continue to ascend because they're playing a top-notch level of defense right now. Yeah. And I also think it's going to be interesting to see how the offense and how Shine continues to evolve the offense yeah. with Taysom as a starter. It's the perfect word, evolve. And I think that's what we're going to see. We saw it with Teddy last year. Where you know Sean kind of played it close close to the vest. I remember Sean, you know, criticizing his own play calling against the uh, Seahawks, uh, as far as like you know how he handled Teddy to where, Teddy or whatever. So I think uh, I think you're gonna see Sean just kind of evolve over time. Uh, just see what you know, see what Taysom is actually comfortable with, because it's unknown, man. Like all this practice stuff, all this stuff you do in practice. I mean, you really don't know it until you get in the game, man. Like, like I've looked, I've looked at all Nick Underhill's like practice analysis of uh, Taysom over the, you know, over the summer, and it's like it's a mixed bag because Taysom is a gamer, bro. Like, he's an in-game type player. It's like, funny. You don't you, really remember, remember the remember how people? I don't know if everyone was, but all the. Like people are like, ooh, CJ Johnner Johnson, he just getting cooked repeatedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in training camp. And it's like, um, Chaun- like Chauncey is not a practice player. Like he doesn't strike me as a practice player. No. But you, no. you he, he get on the field and you move him field. around. Oh yeah. That that's that's a different and I think and to so to to your point, I think it's a perfect example. Cause like if you put Taysom 
doing what like, seven, seven on seven, that's not Taysom's game, bro. That's not no, that's not. not that's not how he plays. No, no, it's not at all. You know, that's not his game at all. So we're going to learn more about him, bro, going forward. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, this, you know, he got kind of lucky this week. He's going against a defense that didn't really have a plan for him. Although I think, that, you know, initially I think the Falcons defense, you know, we could argue if, if that was just Taysom and the offense trying to jail or was it the Falcons defense? I, I'll I say, the, and, I, and I wrote this as a note. I think, I mean, some of that, some of this was on the offense. Some of this was on Sean Payton's conservative play calling. But I wrote in my notes that that first half, the Atlanta defense was playing well, man. Yeah, yeah, they was getting after it, bro. I saw they were flying around. I mean, it was getting after uh, AK. Uh, they, they uh, were, well, my, my dude, Dequez Denard, like, uh-oh, well, I, I but, always liked him. He was always like, let's get Denarded out here. Like, yeah. um, the, and even, you know, I know he, he didn't have the best game, but like in that first half, like even AJ Terrell was, AJ you know, Terrell. Make, was making AJ, plays. So, yeah. so yes, obviously some of it probably was because of the Falcons and the Saints are going to get a much bigger test. You know, next week when they play the, the Broncos, I know that they're they have injuries kind of across the line, or not not their line, but just injuries in their defense in general. But that's still a a defense, a well coached defense by Vic Fangio. Um, so they're they're gonna get they're gonna get tested next week. That's that's for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's gonna be a tough out, bro. It's gonna be a tough out with each game because you know I guess the only negative. If you want to point to a negative with Taysom, is he's been, he has been loose with the ball. Uh, he had an almost interception today, uh, and he fumbled. Uh, you know, he was going in for a score, and he fumbled the ball on a you know on a pretty key you know four minute drill. So, you know that's something that got to be corrected, man. You can't, you know, he's had some fumbles this, you know these past couple of games. You know that's something he got to you know he got to fix. You got you, you can't just you can't do that as a quarterback. Just fumble the ball, you know. You gotta gotta tuck it tight. So you know that's something he's gonna have to improve. Because other than that, it would have been all pretty much a almost a perfect game by him statistically, at least. Oh, for sure, so, for uh, sure. So, uh, so yeah, like he, you know, it's, it's gonna be interesting, man. Like I, I just look forward to it. It's exciting, man. Like because this team is not the old Saints teams where the quarterback has to be, you know, guy walking on water to win. Jesus walking on water or whatever. Like, just don't make mistakes. Make some plays. You know, get the ball to your playmakers. The team is good. It's a good team, man. It's a good offense, a talented offense. Offensive line, running back, wide receiver. Good defense. D-lines, linebackers, secondary. Good special teams. Like, I mean, you can argue, like, Biggest disappointment is Thomas Morris there. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you could argue he's the biggest disappointment because his punts have not been good. How wild so, is that, bro? That's wild, man. That's wild, bro. So, like, if the team continues to play like the team it is, man, like, they could win. They could win each and every week. But, you know, it's going to be a uh, it's gonna be a fight. You know, it's going to be a fight each week. But we'll see. We'll, we'll talk about the different Broncos when they, you know, this time yeah we will we will we're talking about them this week um shit i i realized that on my mini vacation i i for some reason i was only thinking we don't know that makes sense we threw in the the extra taste and pod so yeah i'm recording three on the road that's the day just so you want to listen like i am on vacation i brought my gear i brought my gear because i knew i was like you know what i can't can't leave the people down like just because i'm on vacation like you know um, I I gotta gotta give the people what they want. So I brought my gear. We here for you. We we doing what we we doing for you guys. Uh, Saints are eight and two. Let's talk about. I know we we tweeted it out, but we officially have officially have um our design for the hashtag Saints Twitter mass. Shout out to yeah, no buddy. hot plug or excuse me, hot plug. Uh, hat plug um, for giving us the, the designs. There is no stop the count. There's no we no lawsuits. No none of that bullshit. It's over, done oh. with. Um, and so hopefully, 
hopefully to our all of our Patreon pa patrons. Uh, hopefully we can start shipping those out to everyone. Maybe mid December. It's just going to depend. Good on Christmas present, y'all. Getting a nice Christmas present. There you go. If you're already a Patreon, you're getting a picture. You're getting a Christmas present. So be Done. on the lookout. I'll be Done. on the lookout. I'm going to be, you know, hollering y'all for, uh, you know, your address and all that shit. So be on the lookout. Whatever email you use to sign up for Patreon, I'll be getting at you. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And like I said, the only the only thing that we ask when you get it. Got, got to put it on. Got to fucking tweet it out. Show some love to, to, to the pod. You know that you rocking it. That, that's all we ask. That's it. Um, anything. I mean, I know you were kind of on the road and shit, so you didn't get to see a lot of football, what have you. Uh, um, but any any storylines, you know, that uh, caught your eye that you just want to talk about? I mean, quick? the most depressing one is Joe Burrow. Look like Come he's on, out man. for the season. Come on. And it, I mean, honestly, it was one of those things. It was like, I hate to say it like this, but it was like, I knew it was going to happen. Like, like, if you watch his offensive line, it, it's just, it, it was horrible, man. It was horrible. The offensive coaching was horrible. I mean, he's throwing like more than almost any other quarterback. It's like, where's the run game? It's just, it was a terrible setup for a young rookie quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Even though he's played well. You know, it's just depressing, man, because the kid, he showed his talent, and yeah, you just hate to see, you hope he doesn't get stuck in a wreck with the Cincinnati Bengals, who is a, a joke of NFL organization, in my opinion. It's a joke. Joke, bro. Joke. And, uh, like, as much as we ragged on Marvin Lewis, like, Marvin Lewis was, was, like, the only thing standing between them being, like, a like a half decent franchise to them being a complete joke, and now he's gone. And I don't know, I don't know. So I just I pray, pray for Burrow. Hashtag pray for Burrow. Man, <laughs> it, it's it's a, and of course you know he gets hurt and and it sucks. And of course it has to happen on the FedEx football field, which is the fucking graveyard. The worst the huh. graveyard uh, of football fields for NFL quarterbacks. And ironically, you know, uh, Alex Smith is on the other side of the ball. You get him some W's. <laughs> oh, bro. Get some dubs, you know what I'm saying? Shit, they might make the playoffs the way the NFC East looks. Oh my God. Can we, Seriously. Can we, can, like, we talk, can we talk about I don't what are, I think the Eagles are three, five, and one? I don't three, I don't five, know. Bro, three, six and one. I don't know, bro. They got three wins. That's all I know. And they are they, they will have a home playoff. They would game. host a playoff game, but if they lose three games, they have a top five pick in the draft, bro. How that makes sense, son? That don't make no sense, son. <laughs> That's crazy. And speaking uh, of speaking of records, I saw this when I was watching watching the the Chiefs game of when it went to halftime. That the Ravens are six and seven. They lost in overtime to the Titans again. <sighs> On a walk off Derrick Henry touchdown run. And they, as of right now, they are not in the AFC playoffs. They are like one of those in the hunt teams. The Ravens, the Ravens? bruh. The six and six and four. Bruh. The Ra bruh, that's crazy. In the hunt. I got I I I took my glasses off and put it back. I was like, like what? Like they not the six or seven seed? No, as of right now. Right, because the Browns are seven and three. Yes, in the hunt. The Browns. The Browns, man. Like, how about that? The Browns are seven and three, and like, it's not like Baker Mayfield is like playing out of his mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just, I don't know. They're winning games. They run game. Like Nick Chubb is, Nick, Nick Chubb is awesome. Yes, he I is. I feel like Nick, Nick Chubb got to be 32, bro. <laughs> bro, I was watching Nick Chubb. So, like, I feel like I was like Nick, Nick Chubb at Georgia like ten years ago, bro. How long Can has he been playing? Can we also talk about Carson Wentz? I think he's thrown 18 interceptions oh, or some man. some ridiculous man. number. This maybe that maybe that's hyperbole, but <laughs> I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pissed off, Angelo. <laughs> I'm pissed off, Angelo. Man, it, the Eagles are dumpster fire, bro. <laughs> what? And, they wait, asked, they, and, and here here's where they are as a as a team. They're they're in the worst position that you can be in as an NFL team. Yeah. Oh, they it is. 
they drafted him o- number two overall. They paid him uh, pretty recently. Yeah. And now you 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 cannot tell me that there's not conversations in their building is if if he's the guy. You cannot tell me. Impossible. Of course they. Oh, come on. They they drafted Jalen Hurt in what the second round, third round. Yeah. yeah. Like I mean, come on. I'm just I'm just I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Man. And then uh, they asked uh, Doug Peterson today, like, it's to that point where they asked him, is Carson Wentz going to start next week? Like, they asked, they asked him that, man. So it's like, oof, I'm glad. Oof, really, man. And I, I know, okay, so let me, let's, you know what I was thinking about today watching Taysom, man, is as, as, as a Saints fan, since Drew's been the quarterback, it's 2006, and I, I and I watched that Joe Burrow injury. Since he hurt his his shoulder as a as a charger, to think that he that Drew hasn't had a torn ACL, a, crazy any anything like that is absolutely fucking insane. He has That's been true. such an Iron Man, and. Every time someone plays that isn't Drew, regardless of what you say, want to say about him as a, as a person or his stance, I'm just saying as a football player, like it, it is, it is a stark difference. Oh of, yeah, of how the offense operates when he's not under center. Yeah, I, Sean Payton talked about it last year when the, when Teddy started. He was like, we just. We we had to realize how much Drew does. Like, he just does so much, man. That you just we don't even we don't even respect we him have, because we don't we even have, know. We have no clue. We have like we have that no clue. that Dan um or of our Orlowski clip of him yeah. break like he he breaking down Drew and Mike Thomas and how they yeah. were able to make a completion and change a route like after the snap. Like first of all, that's fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> And just the fact that all these years, think about it, like Drew has, he's had so many different receivers that he's had to develop all these little chemistry with and these off the playbook playbooks to make work just so the offense can be good because your defense ain't shit and you mm. got to score 35 points a game. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, like and for him not to get injured in all those times, he's thrown the ball more than any other quarterback in history over that time frame. So, like, bro, like, you got to put, like, we're, we're going to more, trust me, we're going to memorialize them when their times come, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just know, respect it, is due. For sure. Like, I, we, it's always the same guys, right? It's always Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Mm. Like, like, no, like, mm, mm, anyway, don't get me started. Um, Yeah, man, it's, it's, so, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that happened in the NFL? Uh, no. The the Vikings losing to the Cowboys was yeah. hilarious to me. Um, oh, Je- uh, Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb are fucking man. dogs. Oh man. Um. Yeah. Come Mike Pittman. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, Mike Ryan. Junior you looking good, good, bro. We go, we, go, we gonna do this for we we, we, we end the podcast, we- bro. All them wide receivers, bro. Why we couldn't get one of them, bro? Just one. I just, just took Ayuk. Ayuk. I just took him. Ayuk, man. Just one. Claypool. Pittman. T. T. <laughs> just, just one. Just one. Uh, anyway. Oh, I, I just need to make an announcement. Today, I was in Lafayette, Louisiana. I've been seeing everybody tweet about Billy's Boudin and Cracklins. And I'm like, man, I got to try this place. I'm tired of people. But I'm never out that way. But this weekend, I happen to be out that way for some family shit. I said, let me try this shit before I leave out. Man. Woo. That shit was fire. Uh-oh. Like, oh, man. The, the Boudin, the Pepper Jack Boudin balls. Mm, mm, mm. There's so much that I had to I had to talk about on the podcast. That's how good it was. That that series, that series, that shit, that shit was good, bro. I'm pissed because I ain't got no more. 
I'm pissed off, Angelo. Pissed off, Adam. I'm pissed off, I'm pissed off, Angelo. Like, seriously. Like, bro, that shit is good, man. And you like it too, no seafood in it, so your allergies. Oh, good. man. I mean, when, whenever I am in Louisiana again, which seems to. Take that ride, bro. Come scoop me up. <laughs> Like Can you podcast. scoop a nigga? <laughs> I'm about to end this fucking podcast. Um, we'll be <laughs> we'll be back midweek. Uh, preview the Chargers or sorry, the Chargers game, the uh, the Broncos game. Um, more than likely, we're not going to be able to have a like a you know a, a guest or or what have you during this week just because of um yeah we on fucking vacation. So <laughs> bear with us. Um, anyway, that said. Thanks for all our, all our listeners, all our support. We appreciate you guys tremendously. Um, we do this for you guys. Enjoy this ride, man. Enjoy it. We're, yeah, we're enjoy support. it, man. Just fucking... Hey, hey, shout out to who that homo, Eric. Yo! You know, hey, it's your day, bro. It's your day. There it's your it is. Time, bro. <laughs> take, take your victory lap. Do what do whatever what you need to do. Do what you need to do. Um, but with that, we're going to get out of here. We we'll be back to preview Broncos game. Enjoy this ride. Eight and two, number one seed in the NFC. With that, we're out. Peace. Enjoy all your favorite sports like never before at BetMGM. Sign up using code Hawkeye and receive up to fifteen hundred dollars back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet when you register with BetMGM. You'll get instant access to a variety of parlay selection features, live betting options, and the best daily promotions in the business. And with BetMGM at your fingertips, every play and every game matters more than ever. Remember to use code Hawkeye and receive up to fifteen hundred dollars back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet place your money line prop or parlay bets with the king of sports books today bet mgm and GameSense remind you to play responsibly bet mgm.com for terms 21 plus only iowa only new customer offer subject to eligibility requirements rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days please gamble responsibly gambling problem call 1-800-BETS-OFF this is the story of the one As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Grainger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Grainger, for the ones who get it done.